Father God, we come right now this morning just asking you, Heavenly Father, we glorify your name because you're wonderful and you're great all by yourself. Lord, we come asking you, Heavenly Father, to fill this place with an anointing. Lord, fill this place with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we just thank you for you being you, for looking out for us, for keeping us, for blessing us. And Lord, we just ask you to go into the houses, Lord, and just anoint their houses, Lord, that we can praise you and worship you in spirit and truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Saying good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning star. So glad to worship you this morning. So as you're coming on in, hitting that like button, go ahead and share it. Tell somebody, come on in. This good Sunday morning. Amen. We're going to worship the God this morning. Can we clap our hands this morning live? Song simply says, for the rest of my life, I'm going to serve him. If that's your testimony, go ahead and show it on live. Hallelujah. Oh, the rest of my life. 
hallelujah, show some signs that you know God's name is wonderful. Hallelujah. So this morning as we're worshiping God, lifting his name higher and higher, I hope you feel good about it because we feel good. Amen. Amen, amen. God is so good. He's so kind. He's so amazing to us. So there's reason to give God praise. Hallelujah is the highest praise. It's the highest praise. I said all the time, you possess a hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. That means he's over everything. Everything created on this earth, he created and he knows about it. Our God is so amazing. So if you're at home, you go ahead and slip up your hands and worship. Come on, this is your practice before you get back into the church. Your own worship. Even if you don't get back to the church, you have a moment now to lift up the name of Jesus. As we bow before his throne and give him thanks and praise. Hallelujah. Song's real easy, it's real simple. You can sing it with us. You can type hallelujah online. Amen. Thank you. Say with us, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Declare that's the highest praise. Hallelujah. For the Lord God our might. Come on, let's say it together. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voice right here. We say holy and holy. Oh, yeah, no, 
awesome is the Lamb. You are holy. Come on, just take a second. Just take a second. Just take a second. That's all it takes a second to just say thank you, Jesus, for being worthy. Hallelujah. Worthy. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. I want you to think about what God has done for you. The things that he's done that he didn't have to do. I want you to think about how he gave his life even before you were birthed into this world. And then I got to make it personal and think about myself. He thought about little old Pastor Michael. Yeah, I've had some ups and I've had some downs. I, I ain't always made the right decisions. I ain't always said the right things. I ain't always done the right thing. But then I say worthy is the lamb because it's the lamb that shed his blood on Calvary's cross. That blesses me, not only blesses me over and over, but Brittany the Lamb, he forgives me over and over. You know, I don't always think the right stuff, but I say, God, he Brendan looked behind my faults and he saw my knees. You know, and sometimes I don't always have what I want, but I serve a God, Pucci, that gives me everything that I need. You know, I serve a guy that said that I ain't never had to worry about going hungry. Since Caroline, I serve a guy that when I woke up, I didn't sleep outside last night. You know, Poochie, I serve a God, and I, I'm grateful because it could have been me. But, 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 Cookie, I got in my own car this morning. I drove my own car this morning. And, and I serve a God that, that Pastor Darius gave me a job and gave me a check worthy as a lamb that I was able to go to the gas pump and pump my own gas. I didn't have to worry about anybody giving me anything. Oh, Minister Derry, I serve a God that, yeah, when I woke up, I put on my tennis shoes this morning. I put on my coat and bring day I put on my pants. I didn't need an assistant, an assistant living facility to help me. Worthy is the lamb. You know, I just want you to think about it. You know, we sometimes think about the big stuff, but I want you to think about what you do every day that we take for granted. You know, I take for granted that I put toothpaste on a toothbrush. I take for granted, and that might sound crazy, that I put some soap on a towel or get some shower gel. I take for granted that I turn the knob and the water come on. I take for granted that I flip the switch and the light come on. I take for granted that I can look in my son's room and he was sleeping peacefully. I can look in my daughter's room and he was sleeping peacefully. I looked at my wife and she was sleeping. I don't take that for granted. I don't take for granted that before I walked up here, my mama called me on the phone and said, Michael, can you stop by for a moment? I don't take it for granted. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb. Yeah. When you start looking down, when you start feeling bad, I want you to think about what you do have. Don't think about what you don't have or what you want to have. Think about what you do have. And when you think about what you do have, then I believe you're going to start praising God. Because guess what? It's a whole lot of bad places you could be right now, but you're not. So give God some glory for all that he's done. Yeah. I'm going to leave you with this before I do the announcements. Every time we turn around, every time we turn around, every day and every time we turn around, Brittany, he keeps on blessing us over and 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 over. And he don't stop. And he won't stop until this body leaves this earth. My God, keep on, keep on blessing me. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Worthy. 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 You know, this Sunday morning, we're going to jump into these announcements, but I want you all to keep this praising spirit. I want you all to keep lifting him up. Yeah, because we got a lot to shout about. I ain't going to shout. Not right now. But I'm shouting on the inside because I got to get through this. And we just said it for the last two weeks. But on, on the 20th, on Father's Day, on Father's Day, y'all, I'm going to let y'all shout at home. We've been doing it for the last couple of weeks. We're going to not only celebrate Father's Day, we're not only going to be live, Brittany, on Facebook and YouTube. We're going to be here at Morning Star, 616 North Kings Highway. Morning Star. Y'all pull up on the parking lot. Morning Star. Y'all walk into the sanctuary doors. Morning Star. You sit down on a comfortable pew. And y'all get in here and let's get our praise on. Because we coming back. We coming back. God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. And once again on behalf of our pastor, Pastor Darius and the Morning Star family, we just want to thank you for your continued giving and pouring into the ministry here at Morning Star. We thank you for dropping your tithe and offerings out at the office. You've been coming Tuesday through Friday. You've been coming from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We thank you for that. We thank you for giving on Givelify. We thank you for giving on Cash App. We thank you. Continue to pour in to the ministry as we're doing great things here at Morning Star to build this community. Amen. It's about who we encourage, who we bless, and who we save on the outside of these walls. Amen. Amen. But now, 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 we have something really great to celebrate. Something really great. You know, education is key. Education is key. And we have some of our children, youth, and young adults here at Morningstar who have suffered through a pandemic. You know, it was hard. It was traumatic for some of our children to continue to be educated in the midst of this pandemic. And you don't even know. We don't know how tough it was for some of them, but they did it. So right now, we are about to share with you some of the great accomplishments that our kids at Morningstar have done. Let's celebrate them. Thank you. 
we come to you right now thanking you amen amen I think we're all right uh, father God we bless you we thank you for this day uh, we thank you for keeping us last night while we slumbered and while we slept uh, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness toward us we thank you for being a patient God a loving Father. We thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you for your Son, Jesus the Christ, who died for us, who lived for us, who now sits at your right hand, interceding on our behalf. We thank you for all of the riches and the treasures that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness. 
We thank you for being true. We thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us. And we thank you for this day. For all who are listening to my voice, O oh God, we pray that you would cover them and that you would keep them, that you would preserve their going out and their coming in, their uprising and their down sitting. We pray that you will pour out a special blessing of grace, mercy. We pray, O oh God, that you would meet all of their needs as you have, as you are, as you will. We say thank you, God, for what you did for us just today. We say thank you for what you did yesterday. We say thank you for being the God of all of our days. It's in your son Jesus Christ's name that we ask now that you give us listening ears and open hearts that we might hear the truth of your word, that we might bask in it, that we might bathe in it, that we might be changed by it, that we would go out and live it, do it, be it. I pray for men in particular right now, oh God. You know what they need. You made them in your image. Help us now, oh God, as only you can. It's in your son's name that we pray. We give you thanks always in all things. Amen. 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 We bless God uh, for this day. Uh, we thank God for this praise team. Amen. Let's give them a, a, a round of thanks and appreciation for uh, literally laboring uh, in worship uh, this morning. Uh, we say thank you to this uh, musicians ensemble, amen, uh, for coming out and uh, again helping uh, lead us into worship. We know that where uh, where we worship, there the Spirit of the Lord is, amen. And so we say thank you to them, the media team, the safety team, uh, to Pastor Michael, uh, to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, gathered in your many different locations today. I'm excited uh, to be here in the house of worship. Uh, house of Prayer. I'm excited uh, that next week, as much as I love the team that's here right now, uh, that we get to uh, uh, we get to love even more by seeing your faces uh, in this space. Uh, so we praise God for that. The Lord willing, uh, I'll get to see many of you on next week. Uh, if you're unable to, still uncomfortable with coming out, uh, we definitely understand. Um, and although we'll have safety precautions in place, um, we will continue to provide this online uh, worship experience uh, to you. So amen, we're excited about that. Let me get right uh, into the word today. Amen, right into the word today. Uh, last week, we started a series that I titled Made Men. Uh, once a year, I try to, uh, the Lord has at least placed it on my heart to speak particularly to men um, and the issues that men face uh, the circumstances that men find themselves in, to be a voice of encouragement, uh, sometimes confrontation uh, to men. Uh, last week, we took the second step in our journey, uh, speaking to men in particular. This week, uh, in this series that I've titled Made Men, uh, we'll take the third step in our walk together. Uh, the series is titled Made Men because of this idea that Although men are born, uh, we've lived long enough to know that men have to be made, uh, that you don't come out of the womb all that you uh, can be, all that you should be, all that you will be, uh, but that it is a process like anything else. Becoming a man uh, is a process, and you can be grayed like I am. You can be balding. Uh, you can be in your senior season and still be becoming uh, a man. Uh, today's uh, uh, text I've titled uh, The Goat. Uh, the Goat. Um, uh, men know what that is right off the, right off the bat. Amen. The Goat. G period O period A period T period. Uh, the Goat. I like that period. <laughs> uh, the Goat. Uh, that is simply an acronym for a phrase uh, that is common in secular circles. Uh, the greatest of all time. Um, often we talk about who is the greatest of all times. I won't get into it. I don't have time today. Uh, and I heard some playoffs are happening right now, um, and, and some had an unceremonious exit from the playoffs early, and it raised up the conversation, the debate again, who is indeed the greatest basketball player of all time time. I'll let y'all fight that one out. Amen. I'm going to just tell y'all what Jesus said today. 
Um, in the gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter, we find our uh, sermon lesson for today. And I praise God for those who are in the house who are uh, able to stand in standing. Uh, there in the 10th chapter, beginning at verse 35, we get this uh, picture lesson, a sermonic lesson on what it means to be the greatest of all time. Uh, there in the gospel according to Mark, the writer writes, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him, him being Jesus, and said to him, teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask you. And he said to them, what do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. And the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant. Y'all hear it? To sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. Verse 41, and when the 10 heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. And Jesus called to him, to, to them to him and said to them, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. And their great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in this place. The word of God is blessed. Uh, the greatest of all time. Uh, I said it at the outset, um, men in particular, uh, not that women and ladies are excluded, uh, but men in particular seem to have a fascination with being the greatest. Um, I don't think anybody who's being honest would say that they don't desire to do well uh, to be well, to be the best. We are taught as young children to aspire to be great. Uh, we are taught as young children to have ambition. We are taught as young children to be at the head of the pack, not the, the rear of the pack. You've seen it in uh, PE as they began to line all of the students up. Uh, you maybe experienced it. They would uh, call on uh, captains, typically the kids who had the best physical acumen, the most athletic, those captains would begin to pick players until there was no one left and maybe you were that person who was left, right? And somewhere deep down inside, you desired, you aspired to be better, to be the best, I dare say, to be great. Whatever circle you run in, if you're a police officer, you desire to be the greatest police officer, perhaps. If you're a carpenter, you desire to be the greatest carpenter. If, if you're a lawyer, you desire to be the greatest lawyer. Preachers even, they won't say it, but they too desire to be the greatest. There's nothing wrong with desiring to be great. There's nothing wrong to desire to do well, but I want to paint a picture for men today, particularly in our culture, that in the aspiration, in the ambition, in the pursuit of being great, you can lose yourself if you don't understand what being great really means. I want to speak to women too, to help them understand that when you're looking at a man or you're looking at your child who, who is a man child and, and you are desiring things for them, good things for them in life, that I want you, when you look, I want you to look with the proper view so that when you evaluate and when you assess whether they are great or not, you don't do it with the world's view in mind. You do it with the mind of Christ in mind so that you and I can really know and understand what it means to be great. Jesus helps us today on our, on our path in our pursuit of understanding what it means 
to be great. Um, I've got three movements that I see in this text that we will help you walk through them. The, the text is the outline. The outline is in the text. The, the first thing that we see in our understanding of what does it really mean to be a great man? How can I be a great father? How can I be a for great friend? How can I serve greatly within my church or within my community? The first thing that we see in this particular text is an audacious ask by two disciples of Jesus. The record says that James and John, the sons of Zebedee, we've heard another name for these brothers. They are called the, the sons of thunder. They are a rambunctious sort. They, they, they are brash and they, they are outgoing. The sons of thunder come to Jesus with an audacious ask. They say, Jesus, teacher, we, we desire something of you. They come almost like children for a couple of reasons. They, they come like children because they come asking without saying what they want. Y'all ever had kids come to you and, and they say, uh, uh, daddy or mama, can, can, can you just say yes? I, what am I saying yes to? They, they come to Jesus almost as children asking of Jesus. Not only do I highlight that their mode of asking is childlike, but their method of asking was childlike. If you read this account in the Gospel of Matthew, you'll find that they didn't come alone. They came with somebody. Who did they bring with them? They brought, wait for it, they brought their mama with them. These grown men. Hey Amen. Mamas, I ain't, I ain't saying nothing. I, I'm just, I, man, I ain't, I'm, you, you got a mama, praise God. But they came to Jesus with their mother. The record says in Matthew that James and John and their mother came to Jesus. Not only was it they mama, but you may not know this. Uh, their mother was the aunt of Jesus. She was the sister of Mary. She was a devout woman. She was one of those women who would stay at the cross during the crucifixion when the disciples would flee. She would stay, but they brought their mother with them, men asking and bringing their mother to plead their case. That's just a note to y'all. Don't have your mama plead in your case. If you want some, you go and ask for it. These are grown men who've left life and livelihood. If they've traveled with Jesus, they've been with Jesus. They're disciples of Jesus. They are, they are grown men and they come to Jesus like children asking from Jesus, but not telling what it is they want. Asking, but not asking on their own, bringing the mother with them. And they say to him in this audacious ask, after Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? They said to him in verse 37, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in glory. It's interesting to me that they get something right here in the text. They, they understand at this moment, Jesus on, on the cusp of going to the cross, Jesus at the end of his earthly ministry, Jesus at the foot of of the cross, Jesus, who is preparing to offer himself up, they understand something about Jesus. They understand that Jesus is not just a man. They understand that Jesus is Lord Jesus. When you come into your glory, they, they understood that where Jesus is, glory is. They understood that where Jesus is, majesty is. They understood that Jesus is a king. I only belabor that point because some of us don't understand who Jesus is. We, we count him as being nothing. That's why we give nothing to Jesus. We count him as being nothing. That's why we won't serve for Jesus. We count him as being nothing. That's why we won't lay our lives out for him. We count him as being nothing. That's why we won't defend the gospel for which we believe. We count him as being nothing. That's why we won't mortify our flesh. They at least understand who Jesus is Jesus when you come into your glory grant us to sit at your right and your left it is an audacious ask it it speaks to the time of kings and monarchs where those who would be closest to the king would sit at his right hand and at his left hand and yet this is a problematic request. It is an audacious ask because it speaks to them desiring position, desiring prestige, desiring privilege for which they are not entitled. 
Have you ever desired position? Have you ever desired prestige? Have you ever desired privilege for which you are not entitled? Jesus helps them, but before we get there, we need to look at this ask and understand that they asked for something when they had already received everything. You, 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 you hear me? They, 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 they asked for something, nothing wrong with asking. He says, ask you, you don't even need to ask in my name anymore that, that I go to the father. You can go to the father directly, but in our asking, we need to understand that there are times when we've already received all that we need. Y'all, okay, okay, check this out. You, you say, what are you saying, pastor? I'm saying they asked for something and had received everything. What did they receive? They had walked with Jesus. They, they had seen Jesus heal blinded eyes. They, they had everything. They, they had walked with Jesus. They had seen Jesus raise the dead. They, they had everything. They had walked with Jesus and were able to break bread with him and watch him break bread and bless bread and multiply bread. They had had everything. They had walked with Jesus. They had seen Jesus take a midnight stroll out on the water. They had had Everything They had walked with Jesus and heard Jesus call a man that was dead up out of the grave. They had had everything. What else do you need when he's already allowed you to have experience with him? You know, we've gotten to the point now with our kids, we don't really buy much of anything. We, what we try to do is give them experiences. Clothes, they get tattered, they outgrow a man toys they play with and they discard, but we've tried to give them experiences that they could draw from and learn from and grow from. These men had, I dare say, the ultimate experience. You, you've been to Disney World, but they had the ultimate experience. You've been to the beach, but they had an ultimate experience. They lived with, walked with, learned from Jesus. They experienced Jesus. Jesus, have you experienced Jesus? Have you experienced the joy of Jesus? You got everything. Have you experienced the peace of Jesus? Then with that, you've received everything. Have you experienced the very mercy of Jesus? You then have everything. Have you experienced his peace, his protection, his provision, his power? Have you communed with him and meditated with him and thought on him and found strength and comfort and hope in him? Then you've got everything. Don't give me no car. Don't give me no house. Don't give me a job. Don't give me a this or that. I just want an experience with Jesus. I just want to know that I've been in the presence of the Lord. I, I want to know that I've been accepted in him. I, I want to know that I've got relationship with him. You can have everything else. Just give me Jesus. And so they ask for something when they've already had everything. Jesus says to them in this remarkable response, Jesus says, you don't know what it is you're asking. Y'all, y'all hear, hear, hear that. You, you don't know, you don't really understand what you're asking of me. You, 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 you don't have, children will ask things and, 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 and they'll say stuff like, can we, can we go out of town? My, uh, um, my, my friends, they down in Florida or, or my friends, they got this little Snapchat and now Snapchat, uh, this is a dangerous thing. Snapchat, um, you can see where people physically are. Amen. You can see where people physically are. And, and my sons, they got some friends and their friends like showing where they physically are. And spring break comes and people leave for spring break, but because their friends 
uh, people got more than what my son's people got. They, they look at the map and they say, we got a friend who's down in Ecuador and we got a friend who's out in Spain and we, we got a friend that's in China right now. I say, well, praise be to God. But, but do you understand what you're asking for? That, that in order to go where they've gone and to do what they do, it takes something. Do you know what you're asking for? Jesus says to them, you've asked for something, but I don't think you understand what you've asked for. Why is this a remarkable response? Jesus says, are you able to drink the cup that I got to drink? Are you able to drink the cup? Are you able to endure the baptism that that I have to be baptized into what is this language cup and baptism you you may recall that in the garden of Gethsemane Jesus would pray to God the father until blood and sweat and tears mingled together in concert he would say to the father if this cup can pass from me Lord let it father let it pass Jesus would describe this baptism. It's not the baptism that we participate in. He meant this idea of being submerged in suffering, being taken under in pain. He says that you want something, but you got to understand that everything you want costs something. What you want costs. He says that that this cup is suffering, this cup is pain, that this cup is ridicule, this cup is scorn, this cup is death, this baptism is an immersion, it is an going under, a being covered up. He says, you don't understand, you can't handle what comes with what I've got to go through, because you just want a position without pain. I'm going to tell y'all, you don't get a position without pain. You want a position, you're going to have some pain. You want prep, you're going to have some problems. You, you, don't get a, you, you, you don't get a title without testimony that comes with the title. Everybody want to be a bishop. Everybody want to be a pastor. Everybody want to run something. You don't understand that with following, you want a following. You want people to follow you. You want people to have you as on their Instagram, on their Facebook to follow you. Fatigue comes with followers. Yeah, you get tired when you got followers. You, you have problems when you're in leadership. You, you have fatigue and pain and problems and setbacks. And Jesus says, you don't understand what you're asking for. You, you want power and you want privilege and you want a title, but you don't want pain and you don't want suffering and you don't want testimony. And you don't, rid- you don't want ridicule and you want everybody to like you. Let me let you in on something. This is a cup that comes with what you're asking for. Are you able to take the cup? Are you able to drink from it? Are you able to be baptized in the way that I'm going to be baptized? That is a question for men this morning. The world, it pursues things. It it seeks after things. The world has ambition associated with it, but that ambition, that seeking, that desiring, that pride of life comes with a cost. Are you willing to pay the cost? And it is hard for a good man to climb into the upper echelons of the world system. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that you don't have Christians who are saved and and who have what we would consider to be success, who aren't able to rise through the ranks. But let me just let you in on something. You've got to pay along the way. And for a good man, it gets hard to make those payments. It gets hard. It gets hard. I was joking around with family. I was joking. Um, I, I, I hear the neighbors every day. They got a swimming pool, y'all. They got a swimming pool, and they got these heads just so we can't see the pool. We just get to hear the pool. We get to hear the laughter. We get to hear their pool patio music. We get to hear all of that. I called the pool man out to the house. 
I called the pool man out to the house. I said, I can't have my, my, my children, my wife here, and somebody else uh, swimming. Every, every time it get hot, they get to run out and jump in the pool. They, they walking through the yard next to our yard, friends coming in to get into the pool. They got the sounds going, getting into the pool. I say, what would it take to build me a pool? And he was so happy to tell me. I could do this and I could cut this hill out and we could we could move that. I say, well, what about power line? We don't care about we no, no, they all in the front of the house. We could do this. We could put a retaining wall up. It would be this shape. It would be this size. It would be this material. I can make you a nice pool. I can put the little patio rocks down so your feet won't get hot. You'll be able to walk out the basement in here. And how many people you expect to have over any given time? I can make it where you can have 20 people or so in the pool. This would be a nice pool. I say, I got you, but what does it cost? Because y'all ain't giving out pools. So then I said to the family, I said, I would love to give you a pool. I would love to give you that nice big pool where 20 people could be gathered in the pool with the retaining wall, with, with the retaining wall and with the concrete stamp, with the nice little material so your feet don't get hot. And so when the neighbors are screaming and shouting and playing their music, we can put on some soul jams and bring a little bit of ethnicity to the neighborhood. However, I'm not willing to pay what it costs. To, put a, to get a pool. I, I, I said because to, for me to get that pool, I'm going to have to work a little harder on the job to get that pool and, and really enjoy it and feel like I can handle it. And I'm not willing to give them my whole life for a pool. Praise God for y'all that got them. Invite us over one day because I ain't going to pay today for the pool because it costs some. We, we just have to understand that, that the world will take, the world will uplift, but the world is always attaching a cost to something. He says, are you able to, are you able to, are you able to pay what it costs? But then very prophetically, Jesus lets them in on something. Um, he doesn't tell them how it's going to end because we can't handle how it's going to end. And that's why God don't tell us how it's going to end. Praise God. God is speaking right now. We can't handle how it's going to end. We, we, we can't handle the end destination. It's not about the end destination. It's about the process. We talk on Wednesday night. It's about the path that we got to go through. But he does let the men on some. He says, you will drink from my cup. You will be baptized. What do you mean, Jesus? James would be the first one out of the gate, beheaded for, for believing and talking about and promoting and proclaiming Jesus. James would give his head for Jesus. He said, oh, you're going to drink from the cup. You didn't know that, Brother James, sitting here. You, you didn't understand that. But, but when you get there, guess what? You'll be okay. You'll know exactly what to do. Your faith will be strong, but you will drink from the cup from which I got to drink. Said Brother John, now you might think that what happened to your brother is a terrible thing. His head will be cut off, but but you, you will grow old and isolated on an island of Patmos. You, you will shrivel away. You will be desolate. You will be all alone when you die, but you too will drink from the cup from which I got to drink. But he doesn't get them the detail. And part of life is livings. You don't always know the detail. That's where faith kicks in and trust kicks in. And that's where his power is made perfect in our weaknesses. That, that, that's where his word gives us comfort. That, that's where his spirit provides peace to us. It's not about the end. It's about the process. But he lets them in and helps them to understand you will drink. You will be baptized. But as far as who gets to be at my right and who gets to be at my left, that's not for me to decide. That's for the Father. That's a word to us today. Um, we can pray and we can ask and we can petition and we can seek, but it's for the Father to give. They're talking about positions of prominence and positions of prestige, but I want to cast the curtain wide open and say, whatever it is, it's for the father to give. If it's a new job you've been praying for, brother, it's for the father to give. 
if, if, if you want to be reconciled, you, you can do all that. You can turn yourself in knots and into a pretzel, but it's for the father to, to give. You, 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 you want to move on. You want more. You want to be different. You want to do different. It's for the father to give. Ladies, cut them some slack. It's for the father to give. And so maybe, just maybe, the father is working on them and working on you at the same time. So it ain't about you getting what you didn't ask for, but it's about what the father is doing in and through you. And at the proper time, the father will give or the father will withhold. But it's for the father. Y'all with me? It's for the father to give. Um, Pastor, when we come back, do you think more people will come to the church? Pastor, you've been preaching till you've been sweating. Every Sunday, you preach a hard, Pastor. But it's just us, Pastor. And I'll say to anybody, uh, one thing I won't have a stroke over, amen, is uh, how many people join Morningstar or leave Morningstar. Why? Because it's for the Father to give. It's just for us to work and serve and trust and believe and hope and do what we've been called to do. But it's for the Father to give. The final thing I saw in the text was this uh, insightful illustration that Jesus gives them. Uh, they ask this audacious question. Uh, Jesus gives this remarkable response, but then Jesus gives an illustration to help them. Not just to help them, but to help the other disciples too, because anytime you have aspiration, Anytime you have ambition to do anything, um, there are always going to be some people, somebody who's got a problem with what you, somebody's who's got a problem with what you aspire to be. Um, it goes back to the root sin that these brothers had. It's pride. It's a lack of humility. These other 10 fellas, um, they, the disciples, they get upset. They, they get upset not with the substance of what's asked for, right? Not, not with the fact that you've asked to be seated on his right hand and seated on his left hand, but they're upset that they would have the nerve to want prominence. We've been with Jesus too. Yeah, we've been with Jesus too. This is a spirit of competition. This is a spirit of competitiveness. It's not humility that causes them to take issue. They're upset because they say, we've walked with Jesus too. And you, James and John, y'all were with Peter when, when Jesus was on the mount, we call it the mount of transfiguration, where Jesus' face would shine, as the old preachers would say, like the noonday sun. You were there with Jesus. I know you can't tell us, but you had an experience with him already, and now you want more? They were upset. They were upset with James and John. So Jesus tries to help them. And I believe in helping them, he helps us. Jesus, verse 42, called to them and said, you know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentile, they lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them. Jesus says, you know that in the world, you when you look around Rome and Caesar and Herod, you understand that those who have position and influence and power, they act as overlords. They act as uh, uh, authoritarians. They act as tyrants. They they control. They conquer. They they demean. You know how they act. That's how the world acts. And that's why it's hard for a good man a good woman to achieve consistently in the world system. Because at some point, you have to pay the cost to run with that kind of crowd. 
At some point, not every case, I get it. We got good Christian folks in all kinds of positions and in all kinds of places. But as a rule, the world has a system. So all I'm trying to say to you is don't get discouraged in that. Don't, don't, don't hang your head low because of that. Don't, don't be crestfallen because of that. The world has a system. They, they overlord, they overrule, they control, they, they treat those who are lower with disregard, with disdain. He says, that's how the world acts. People with authority, y'all know them, they on your job. You know them, you've seen them. People with authority, you can't give everybody authority. I got to the point now, I don't even, I don't, I don't even make up titles no more. Y'all know before, we, before COVID, we switched to, uh, um, what are you? I'm the lead servant. I'm the lead servant for media. What are you? I'm the lead, I'm the lead servant for the communion table. What are you? I'm the lead servant on the parking lot, right? Because the world, they get power and they get authority and they lord over, overrule, control. He says, verse 43, and I love the language, but it shall not be so with you. You hear that? But it shall not be so with you. I love that kids come up and they, they want to do something and they say, my friend's doing it, but it shall not be so <laughs> it shall not be so with you. Uh, Dad, I, I want to go, but it shall not be so. It shall not be so with you, son. D Dad, can I just buy? But it shall not be, be so with you. It is a loving phrase. It, it is a reminder that you are different. You've been set apart. You, you are holy. You, you've been made for a purpose. It shall not be so with you. The brothers, they get uncomfortable when the preacher comes over and there's a party or there's a get together because they want to do what they want to do and they feel awkward. Let me let you, act. don't feel awkward. Do what you do. I just understand that God has told me it shall not be so with you. I know you want to kick back with, but it shall not be so with you. Jesus says that's how the world is. Jesus would later say, I don't ask God that you father that you would take them out of the world just keep them from the world. In other words, it shall not be so with you. The world fight, but it shall not be so with you. The world, hey, the world you cut, they cut back, but it shall not be so with you. The world doesn't forgive, but it shall not be so with you. The world doesn't love, Shall not be so with you. He says, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. I want to be great. Whoever would be great among you would be your servant. I want to be great, God. I want people to know my name. I, 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 I want... I want I want to have more money. I want to have more influence. I, I just want to have my own place so that I'll be on the same level that I think other people are at. I, I, I want the pictures that they put up. I, I just want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want to be great in the eyesight of other men or of other women. I want to be great. Whoever would be great among you shall be your servant. For me to be great means that I have to serve. I thought that when I got great, I got served. Right? I thought that, I thought that that's what you, that's why we do this. To get served. To get things. To, to, to obtain stuff. To have access to certain places. I thought that that's why we want to be Great, we want people to serve us, but it shall not be so with you. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. It shall not be so. If you want to be great in the kingdom, you've got to serve. i am pick on preachers because uh, I am one. Um, I don't know where some of these jokers come from. Lord, forgive me. If I ever wrong, I am. Forgive me, Lord, please. You want a seat. Pastor D, thank you. 
for taking the chairs out of the, for taking it. You want a seat? I ain't talking about nobody here. Y'all don't get, don't throw stuff at me. Don't send me mail. I ain't going to read it. You want a seat? No, you've been called to serve. You ain't, you can't sit down when you serve and you, you're a table waiter. You, you're serving. You're, you're in the trenches. You're serving. You, you don't have time to put on a robe. You're, you're serving. You, you gotta go. You, you don't have time to get a glass of orange juice. You serving. You're serving. If you want to be great, you gotta serve. Nobody want to hear what you got to say about anything. You need to serve. It's through your serving that you become great. He says, it shall not be so with you. Whoever would be first, you want to you wanna eat first. You want to eat first. You want to you be first in the line. You want to be first in the parking lot. You want to be first in the door. You want to be first out the door. He says that that if you want to be first, you got to be a slave for all. He went from talking about a servant, a, a hired hand that, that is waiting the table, that, that, it, that is serving. He took it lower. He, he said, you got to be a slave. You want to be first in line? You got to be a slave. 12 years a slave, 30 years a slave, 50 years a slave. He says, you got to be a slave. If you want to be first, here's how you get there. You don't get a bigger title. You, you, don't get, you, you don't get anybody to lay hands on you. You become a slave for all you give up your prerogative that's how you're great in the kingdom he says you 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 gotta lower yourself we talked about how jesus came jesus came and i preached that jesus came in humility he lowered himself he put on flesh he lowered himself he he was ridiculed and mocked he lowered himself he was crucified on a cross he lowered himself he was wrapped and put in a tomb he lowered himself he experienced physical death he lowered himself he he says you got to take yourself low if you want to be great and because i always want to preach with practicality in mind um, what does that look like then in your house does everybody got to wait on you? Y'all know I grew up in a generation. Uh, I'm going to make fun of y'all. Uh, y'all don't y'all don't get mad at me. I ain't going to read the mail if you send it. If you talk about me, I just say, nah, I don't want to know. I don't care less. Pastor, did you see what they posted? Nope, I didn't see it. I don't care. I don't want to know. But I grew up in a generation and give honor where honor is due. But on Thanksgiving, the men would come. They, <laughs> they could sit at the table and, and everybody would serve them. Right? They get a platter. They got the platter, the charger. They got, and they just sitting there. I became pastor and they invited me to the table. I was so uncomfortable sitting at the table because I'm used to at my house serving. I, I, I don't just get served, but, but we serve. He, he says that this is the imagery. You, you're not here to get served. You're here to serve other people. So in your house, man, has, has anybody taught us how to serve? They teach us how to fight. We come out the womb, we know how to fight. I, I taught my, and, and mine, they mama taught them how to fight. She said, I don't know if it's right or not. I ain't learned it this way. She said, you put your thumb between your, your pointer finger. She said, and then you punch them right in the nose. That's, that's, that's Lady T. That, we teach them how to fight. Right, right, right. We, we teach them how to, how to, how to get somebody. We, we teach them that. Here's how you slow dance. You put your hand. Okay, that's Sunday morning. I can't do that. But we teach them that kind of stuff, right? Right? And, and we're good. We teach them how to work, go to work, and make sure they pay you for what you do. You don't let nobody take advantage of you. We teach them that kind of stuff. But have we taught men how to serve? How to humble yourself? How when you got a sick wife and, 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 and you, you already, I ain't getting in your business. You divide it. She do this stuff. You do this stuff. But she can't do what she used to do. How you then roll up your sleeves and you serve. You wash the dishes. Yeah. And you boil some eggs. Now, you ain't got to do a whole lot of cooking. Just apply heat. 
boil some eggs, throw some bacon in the microwave, just apply heat. We ain't even cooking here. We just serving. How, how you get some Tide Pods? You ain't even got to pour nothing. Just drop them in the laundry and then just throw. You ain't got to sort or nothing. Just throw them all in and let it wash and then apply heat again. Dry it all up. Just serve. Do we teach men how to serve? Or when you do those things, do you think it's beneath you? And, 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 and you wonder why they mad at you and why they tired because they've been serving all day y'all say I'm being harsh on y'all Lord let me Lord, calibrate it calibrate it calibrate it all I'm saying is do we serve I gotta pay all the bills well maybe you do so pay them why are we announcing that you gotta pay all the bills all of this is on me. It's supposed to be on you. So why are we announcing it to the world? Yes, it's on you. Serve. My friends out doing this. Good for your friends, but God called you to this situation, this circumstance. Serve. I got to go to work, then I got to go home and do this, this. And my mama, my mama, she cooked every day. My mama cooked every day. My mama cooked every day. Apply some heat, serve. I'm, I'm only staying here because then these little boys, they grow up to be men. And because nobody is serving them and wiping their face and telling them good job and patting them on the back, then there's a problem. No, men teach these young men how to serve. Jesus says, I'll give you the image of it since you want to know what it looked like. He says, I know you think you somebody, but even the son of man came. You see it? Not to be served, but to serve. He says, even me. He says, I know it's hard. And I'm going to get to that because I'm not going to leave y'all mad at me, brothers. I ain't going to leave y'all mad at me. I'm not going to leave y'all mad at me. I promise you. Um, <laughs> let me stop. I ain't going to leave y'all mad at me. But, but, but he says, uh, even I came not to be served, but to serve and give my life as a ransom for many, for all, as a payment, as a payment to who? God the Father. I came and gave. This is what I'm here for. If you want an image of it, it is laying down your life. So if you got a wife, for your wife. Right? Husbands, love yourselves as Christ loved the church and gave himself up. If you got children, guess what? The day I had children, I'd already died once. <laughs> I'm hearing the old priest. Y'all forgive me because I'm going long because uh, it's just good to me now. Yo, y'all forgive me. Uh, I, old priest, they died one time. They ain't going to die no more. Okay. So I died the first time when I got married. And then I died again when I had Camden. And then I died again when we had Case. And then I died again when we had Cade because it's not about me anymore. What I want how I want it. I know that is hard. That, that's hard to take hold of. Even here, I'm the pastor. Guess what? You've been called to die again. Die to yourself. Die to your prerogatives. Die to your privileges because you're being made into something new. Dying again. He says, this is the picture. It is a, it is a death my question to you, brothers, is, have you died? Have you died? Where is it that you refuse to die? Is there a place, is there a space where you refuse to, to go under, to be baptized, to drink fully from the cup that you have been called to drink from? Have you died? Are you still holding on to your life, your prerogative, your way. Do, do you want to be great in the eyesight of God or do you want to be great in the world's eyesight? Have you died? Jesus says that um, this is the illustration. 
I didn't come to be served. God is not a man that we would serve him, that, that, that God needs anything of us. We serve God. That's why we still use the term by hearing his word and living out his word in our life. You say, Pastor, there's some hard stuff. I, you said you was preaching to men, encourage men. You done got on our heads about serving. You, 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 you got us out here bad. You got us out here bad. Um, I want to tell you that what I've encouraged you to do today uh, is impossible to do on your own. Are you with me? You can't do it. I can't do it. Um, you can't die to yourself on your own. Your flesh will keep getting up. Your flesh is filled with pride. Your flesh is filled with ego. Your physical body, I talked about serving. You say, Pastor, I work a double. And then you're telling me to come home and cook something. Like, your physical self, you can't do what I'm telling you to do, what I'm encouraging you to do from God's word. But you are not alone. You with me? You, you, you got the sick spouse, or you're raising kids by yourself, or you're a widow, or you're separated, or you got a bad boss at work. You, you're, whatever your situation is, you can't serve on your own. But praise be to God, I found this word in 1 Peter chapter 4. Verse 10, here's what Peter says, and we're closing. He says, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. You hear it? Whoever serves, whoever, whoever lays down their life, whoever becomes a servant, a table waiter, a slave, you do it in the strength that God supplies. You are not by yourself. So when you're upset and you're frustrated, you're washing the dishes because you got to wash the dishes because you're serving. Say, Lord, I, I'm serving in the strength that you supply. When you got to be the bigger person, when you're called on to be the bigger person, when you're called on to forgive, when you're called on to be forbearing, when you're called on to do the practical things of life, whatever they may be, you say, God, I'm serving, I'm submitting by the power, by the strength that you provide, that you provide, that you supply. You provide. I don't, I'm not going to sit here today and say, I can't keep doing this. I just need you to supply me with strength and power for today. I, I don't know about tomorrow. I just need it for today. I don't even need it for today. Go, Lord, I, I, I just worked. I'm tired and I need to serve my family. I just need, I need the strength for this hour. I just need it for an hour, God. I just need you to supply it for an hour because you said you would supply you would give me what I needed you would provide I don't know how long the sickness is going to last God but I know that I can serve my family in the strength that you provide I'm calling on you for strength right now God help me serve help me do it with joy in my heart don't, don't help me do it with a pleasant spirit help me serve help me serve in faith trusting you believing you counting you as trustworthy I don't want to grumble I don't want to complain anymore I, I don't want to be frustrated I don't want to be angry I don't want harsh words to go forth I'm asking you God to give me the strength to serve, serve in my family, serve in my community, serve in my church, serve my family by working, by seeking work, serve my family by fixing what's been broken 
with your help, I know it can be done. The stuff that I messed up, I know it can be done. I know you can work it out. I need you to give me the strength. I know I'm not where I'm going to be. I know I'm not all that I shall be. I need you to give me strength. Help me, God. Help me, God, in the strength that you provide. I messed some stuff up, but Lord, I know you can come in. I know you can come in. You can rearrange it. You can fix it. Not in my time and in your own timing. I need you to give me the strength right now, though, to stand right now while I'm misunderstood. I need you to give me the strength to stand while people don't understand what I'm going through. I need you to give me the strength to stand while not everybody understands where I am. Give me the strength to serve God with a pleasant heart, with a pleasant spirit. With your word in my lips, not not the words of the enemy in my lips. I need you to give it to me with a mind that is on Christ and on what's good and on what's pure. I need you to give me the strength to serve God. Help me be a man of service. Help me to be a man of service, God. Help me to lay down my life. Help me to lay down my life. Everything that I'm holding on to, help me to lay it down. All of my ambitions, help me to lay them down. Help me to trust that what you have for me is better than anything I can think of, any, anything I can imagine, anything I can ask for. Help me, God. Give me strength. Give me power. It's perfect in my weaknesses. Give, give me the power to wait. They that wait upon you shall renew their, their strength. Give me the ability to wait. Help me, God. Help me serve in the strength that you provide. In the same way that you gave Jesus the Christ all that he needed to lay down his life for me. To have all that I have in him. The same power that raised him from the dead. That seated him at your right hand. I know that it is moving in me right now. Help me. And if there's anybody, God, who's who's here, who's listening, who has not accepted the ransom payment that was paid on their behalf. Move, oh God. Move in their hearts. Convict them right now, oh God, of sin and of righteousness. Draw them to you, not a church to you, not a pastor to you, not a ministry to you, that they would be made new. We bless you now. We can't see what you're doing, but you've already done it. (laughs) We can't grab it, but you've already done it. Yeah, yeah, God, there's been no article written about it, but you've already done it. You made a way, already made a way, already built it up, already restored, already made things new. We say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We're not going to wait to see it. We say thank you, God. We're calling those things which are not as though they are. We say thank you, God. We're not waiting for somebody to come and tell us it's happened. We trust you. We say thank you, God. We're not waiting on everything to work out. We already know you're working things out for our good. We say thank you, Lord. Bless your name. In this place, in this place, on this day, Amen. Amen. We bless God in this place. Amen. Yeah. We thank God for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And wherever you go this week, whatever you do, whatever joy you experience, whatever sorrow you and I must endure, may the Lord give you peace. It's peace that I leave you with. In Jesus' name, and for his sake, amen. Amen. Amen.